Hello, everybody. Hope everyone's doing good. Hello. Sup. Today is a good day because it is time for Hero CCL, presented by Roll20, but co streamed by your boy, Tetcher. How's it going? I am not suave or handsome enough to pull off that level of smooth. But. We are here to bring you all the games from Hero CCL today with your alternative commentator, aka moi. I hope you're all ready to enjoy some great Heroes of the Storm action. If any if last games, uh, yesterday, sorry, his games are to go by, then this should be an amazing day of gameplay. So, before we go any further, let's talk about the matches we have today. Today, we're going to be talking about our day two matches. This is, of course, December 6th today. And we're going to be starting off with Chili Mountain, currently 0 and 4 in series. A pretty solid 0 and 12 in terms of map score. They're going to be playing against the current seventh place team, Sidestep Kings. Sidestep Kings need the win here. They gotta get that boost to get themselves up onto the board. If they can win in a 3-0 today, they will overtake Granite Gaming by a single map score, which would be a big deal considering yesterday's result. I'll have to see how that goes. Sidestep Kings, every other team who's played obviously Chili Mountain so far has managed to achieve a solid 3-0. The problem is Sidestep Kings aren't playing against the same Chili Mountain. Chili Mountain used their very last player swap to get them to swap out Mystocles and CPX in exchange for Gia and Galnaguna. Now, in my opinion, a great swap, because for starters, those two players are amazing. I commented to them a lot during the EU scene. I think they are very, very solid players. And for second, more Swedes equals more win. So therefore, the new, the now 33 and 3 recurring percent more Swedish side, uh, Jelly Mountain are going to be playing up against Sidestep Kings. But Sidestep Kings, they took Oxygen Esports to the brink last week. Let's see if their continued scaling is going to allow them to claim it. And of course, as someone in the chat just mentioned, there's always the pressure, as Crescent Method said, of not being the first team. So we're going to see. You were only able to watch it today. I still hope you enjoyed it, one power slide man. I hope you had a good time with it, and I hope you'll enjoy today's games too. Our second series of the day after this one will be Simplicity, currently sitting in fourth position. If they win, they'll manage to they'll manage to creep up and actually catch up to crowd control. If they lose, they're going to be dropping down towards 30k Granite Gaming, and if they win, sidestep Kings in the two three in the two three mines, which would have if Simplicity lose and sidestep Kings win. There would be four teams. Half of our board would be on a 2-3 score, making playoffs very exciting. But we still have quite a few more weeks to go for playoffs, and we are, of course, starting today still with our Chili Mountain versus Sidestep Kings games. So, let's talk about the teams. We have some fun stuff here. Of course, Sidestep Kings, the team that a lot of people expected to do very well from the draft, and a lot of people, including me, expected them to have won the draft because we are career simps. But... In this case, Sidestep Kings have had a very rough start to the season. They've managed to lose so far. They beat Simplicity earlier on in the season, but they then lost to Granite Gaming, which we just saw yesterday. Wasn't that big of a surprise, actually. Granite Gaming are popping off right now. They then also lost to Crowd Control, one of the best teams, and they lost to Oxygen Esports. So, in fi so actually, Sidestep Kings have lost to the best teams so far. They so far have yet to play Wild Hearts. They still have to play against them. That will be in week number seven, final week of play. And next week they play against 30K, who are also really starting to scale and do very, very well. <coughs> I know uh, it's happening too darn late, but this is a fine way to spend the last two hours you got here. I hope you'll enjoy it. Of course, I will be running reruns, and you can, of course, check the, the VODs out on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Tetcher, where you can in theory become the first YouTube member that I have over there. No one has signed up for YouTube memberships yet. It is cheaper than subbing on Twitch. So, let's talk about our teams here. Sidestep Kings, they've actually played against some of the toughest opponents so far. Now is their one match that in theory they feel like they should probably win. We'll have to see how that goes. But again, uh, Sidestep Kings, 
Going up against Chili Mountain here is not the same Chili Mountain that everyone else has faced. And they're going to be feeling probably a little annoyed about that. But let's talk about the new players that they do have in here. Gia, for starters, is a very strong player. <coughs> Excuse me. Swedish slash Taiwanese player. Very, very strong. Currently playing on Chili Mountain. He's played on teams. He's played the, uh, back in the day on the Go Fours. This is right around when HGC really was ending. And he only played a couple games during 2018. Uh, so he's not too well known there on his team. The Newcomers, very appropriate, where he was not able to perform too well. He also played on a Team Go, which is a strong team in the Open Division. They only positioned fourth there, didn't make it into the Crucible. However, they did keep playing and they performed quite well. He performed in Team Sweden for the EU Nexus Cup. This is Gia, by the way. And f finished in third place, uh, losing to team, uh, beating Team Ukraine there <coughs> in the third place match. He then played in Division S with Team What Does the Photographer Say, aka Team Cheese, and being a very good, uh, being very solid for them. This is, of course, a very strong team featuring some top Swedish talent. They finished very, very well in the qualifiers and did a solid job throughout the season. In the Nut Cup with Team Pineapple, Team Bolo, they finished in fourth place. This was, uh, of course, Shrimpy's team. Shrimpy, of course, is the coach for Chili Mountain now. And they even played going over to Sweden in Gold Series, where they finished in fifth place in season one of 2019, traveling all the way out to Taiwan to play there. Very solid plan, very good idea. Overall, though, hasn't managed to finish too many times above second place. Masters Clash qualifiers, second place. Don't Panic Cup, fourth place. EU in-house, third place. Obviously not of a team in that one. Third place in Panda Cup 1 and Method Mayhem Cup 3. In the actual Method Mayhem finals, fifth to sixth. So, so far, not doing too well. And, of course, fifth to eighth in the Chili Mountain Ice Cold Cup. The most recent one for EU. Playing with Swedish House Mafia. Very strong team. But overall... Gia not placing too far above second place in a lot of the tournaments that they have played in. On the other side, we have Gal on the other side we have Galen the Gooder, the other new player. Very similar path here, positioning in uh, rarely above second place, but a big growing talent. Same teams here with what the, the, what does the photographer say? Did play for Wind and Rain for a little bit. That was a very strong team back in the day. Eventually jumping onto a team that I never pronounced right, Schubert Walk. Uh, playing very well there, playing in all Hallows Cup, first and fourths across the board there. But once we get to 2020, we don't pay place above second. Masters Clash, qualif uh, Clash Qualifiers, second place across the board. Don't Panic Cup, my tournament, second place with Lauber's, fa with Lauber's Fan Club. And then with What Does the Photographer Say, again in the Method Mayhems, fifth to eighth, third to fourth, fifth to sixth, and then Panda Cup, third to fourth. So the highest place they have finished is second place since 2018. Their one first place in the All Hallows Cup 2. With the very strong team, Skook Support. So, these are team, these are players that have positioned relatively high, but never have really broken into that top echelon of play. But I think that this swap is potentially a Shrimpy choice or a player choice, where the players have looked at it and have tried to adjust their composition to such. I think it's smart. I think these are good players with a lot of potential to grow. But again, the mainstream success has not been shown for these players, so they're going to have to show their strength when it comes to sidestep kings. It's a tough first, first matchup. We'll have to see what they're able to do. We're waiting for the game to start, by the way. I have no control. We're on the clean feed. Not much we can do about that. We'll jump into the game as soon as it is ready. So... As a reminder, if you enjoy the show tonight, please consider dropping a sub. We had a goal of hitting 100 subs before the before Christmas, and we blasted that yesterday with over 40 subs being gifted out in the chat. Thank you so much to everyone who did that, Ferryman especially. Thank you so much for your support, as we are now on 123 subs. So I guess we have to rebrand our goal to be 150 subs before Christmas, which means we only need 27 subs plus any that expire but right now that is a, a goal that if yesterday's to go by insanely achievable but our new goal is 150 subs before christmas so if you're enjoying the show please consider dropping a subscription on twitch 
to or dropping some bits or donations using Streamlabs. And if you're watching on YouTube, donation link is in the link below the stream in the description. And of course, if you look below the stream, there is that join button. This will allow you to become a member for as low as 99 pence a month. It's almost nothing, but it's all support for me, and that support is very appreciated. So, <coughs> let's now talk about Sidestep Kings. Sidestep Kings, of course, we've already mentioned they have been scaling, and they have been scaling hard. They have really started to find their stride last week, especially when they played against Team Oxygen. Team Oxygen was one of the best maps matches we had. Oxygen really got their stride at the end on Battlefield and Dragonshire. But before that, we had some really, really insane play with Sidestep Kings taking game number one. The one of only two teams to take a game number one versus Oxygen, the other one being Granite Gaming. They were able to win very effectively using a Gul'dad Tychus composition. It was very effective. They then lost on Garden of Terror to an Abathur composition where Oxygen regained control. They then absolutely smashed Oxygen in game number three, Towers of Doom, where Oxygen tried to play a sneaky Abathur and Vikings play, which sorted Sidestep Kings playing Hammer and just running it down bots. We have our draft, ladies and gentlemen. Let's jump into it and start off with today's games. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we're underway. Chili Mountain on the left. Sidestep Kings on the right. Let's see how we start this off. With Sidestep Kings taking the first ban. They will remove the Chromie. Chromie still the highest prioritized hero from any hit from any team in CCL. She's appeared in 88% of all matches. But Deev has jumped up the board to number three, it appearing in 78% of matches. A very solid ban coming out from Chili Mountain here. Medivh and Kromi fighting for the top ban position. Kromi in 69% of games banned. Medivh in 66. An intense battle Catch between those two to see who can take the most bans. No one has been banned more than either of those two, I believe. So. Where do we go from here? We're going to see the Abatha band out, Cassia as well. Cassia also in the highest priority heroes in number, position number four, appearing in 76% of all games. Abatha a little bit further down, but it's still a smart choice here. Banning that against Sidestep Kings. They've yet to play it, but we do know that they have a lot of very flexible players there. Thank you for the sub, Arkham Tabival. Cat Jam! Thank you very much for dropping the subscription to the Tetra, cha to the Tetra channel. Very appreciated indeed. So, we see the Stokov as first pick coming in for Sidestep Kings. Sidestep Kings, they do like that Stokov. They do have a bit of more of a preference over Brightwing, but the Stokov still very friendly for them. They played it in three games, and it's been working out quite well for them. Current, actually, no, it hasn't. 0% win rate on Stokov so far for Sidestep Kings. They are running with Hyde, by the way. Oh, Hyde and Jude. Okay, I just realized as we see the Lost Vikings getting picked up for Sidestep Kings. As Chili Mountain, they bring in the, the Diva and Tyrael. They are running, by the way, with Gia, not yet running in with Gal Naguna. Gal Naguna are a great analyst, so they might be using him for a more draft style here. As Diablo is taken away from Cattle here. So yeah, Hyde and June with Ultralisk. Losing out on Gutfilth here for the, for, uh, for the side of Sidestep Kings. Leaving them with just one American. Well, two Americans, if you get, two Americans with June. Junkrat going to be coming in here as a solid ban. Would be very solid for Sidestep Kings, but they don't want someone to really clear the waves fast and prevent those Vikings doing what they do. I love that they brought in the double support for this. We'll see how it goes. We see Chimera bringing out the Lucio, and of course, Reactor Gia bringing out that Zeratul. He's a very strong Zeratul player, so seeing that reaction is very smart. Gives them a good way to try and deal with those Vikings, and Lucio keeps this team very mobile. Does prevent Juice Pirates, which were potentially being hovered out with that Tyrael being picked up early, but this is just more one of Beargot's favorite picks these days. Really has been enjoying that Tyrael quite a bit. Varian Greymane, a very burst heavy composition for the four man here. But yeah, Tyrael appearing in two so far, now three of Chili Mountain's games. Ever since Bergolt has joined the roster, he has played it quite a few times here. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Slice Up Kings, one of the only teams who have yet to change their roster, as Marker comes in with the Rainer, the only ranged assassin for the team. So, very burst heavy from Sidestep Kings. They want to try and lock down that Zeratul if he tries to engage. Try and pick him off. Lots of interrupts for the objective with Tychus. Greymane, less or so, but still has some. But they've got some really good follow-up here. So, we're going to be getting ready to jump into game number one. Overall, that Zeratul is a smart pickup here. The Rainer is a safe pick. Going to avoid a little bit some of the burst, at least. But overall... The Zeratul is currently the only re... Zeratul and D.Va are the ways they have for dealing with Vikings. D.Va could double soak on this map as well as basically every other map because of her incredibly fast rotations. So it wouldn't be too surprising for me if we do see D.Va focusing more on that and that might give them a way to match the Vikings. The Vikings though really do flip everything on its head and with the kill potential of the rotating gank squad of Sidestep Kings. I think I might be leaning towards Sidestep Kings here with their actual just... Fantastic rotating gank squad. Might get them too much of an early lead because the Vikings are going to be soaking and there's less punishment until Zeratul starts getting, uh, unless Zeratul can get some good picks from the side of Chili Mountain. Once Zeratul gets going, that's very punishing, but they need to gain some momentum first. So, let's get this started. We are heading in. Ladies and gentlemen, on the left-hand side, it will be Chili Mountain. Now, 33% more Swedish. Chimera, Bergolt, Maka, Gia, and course we have their offlane at Darkbok. On the right it is Sidestep Kings. We've got June, Hyde, Kyocha, Ultralisk and Cattle coming in here. So June playing the Vikings already microing around a bit. Starting off with the level one tank Olaf build. Not too surprising there. Look at Rainer by the way. Going with Exterminator. Wave clear. Not Bothering with the any extra so any extra kill potential here, he knows that won't be a problem. They have enough damage with Zeratul, so in his case, they want to just make sure they're not out macro. So having the extra wave clear is going to be the strategy that we do see from that Rainer. Smart pick by Marker. We'll see if it pays off though, because again, they do lose on quite a bit of damage here, especially as their only real CC is slows from Tyrael once he gets bound by Law. Rotation comes in. Kyocha cleaned it up the way. Nice job there. Quarterback, no surprise there. Chimera doing exactly what Lucio should be doing and is interrupting the rotations, causing a lot of grief. Free level four. He's going to be very safe to do this to Cattle, especially if Cattle does decide to rotate. Right now, we're seeing Hyde and Cattle rotating together. June has Olaf up in top lane, soaking out, getting the XP up there. Let's see what they can do with this. Kyocha starts on the Merc camp. Split the Mercs in two with their grenade, so we'll not be able to use the grenade for a second interrupt there. As we see a Bruiser camp being taken by the rest of Sidestep Kings, making the most of the Vikings. One in each lane. They soak up the experience. Druun takes a little bit of damage on Olaf, but Olaf the Stout giving it that block stacks and reduce it. And of course, getting that 20% bonus health on Olaf, making him a lot safer in that offlane and a lot tankier when the actual main fights come around. Could even go for the large and in charge and have a little bit of a safer engage rather to risk the dying there. No level four yet. They still went in for Chimera. A lot of damage is dealt. Chimera will survive though. Ultralisk back in away. Takes a lot of damage. Sorry for the stutter. That is on the clean feed side. Gia blinks. No Ultralisk. Forced to back up. Quick brawl in the middle of the lane. Both teams trying to work through the other's mercenary, but also look for kills. There is that taunt. Rush down for Diva. Full cleave build for Zeratul. Very interesting to see here. Thick skin for Ultralisk. Wants to be able to sustain their way through the engages of Zeratul. Lots of extra sustain to be coming in there. Eric the Swift, no surprise there. They look to get some damage onto Beargold. Belog off his escape with the Lurking Arm. But the push will just keep coming. Balog, zone safe. Olaf, zone safe. They just soak this up. 
Soaking up the experience, not really caring about the team fight yet, just making sure they get the experience. June takes a little bit of damage, but Olaf, of course, has a passive health regen talent, meaning he will actually be sustained very effectively. He's the least effective Viking to kill. If you're looking to harass someone down, er Baylock is the Viking of choice. Eric the Swift makes him a little bit harder to pin down. There's the lockdown, trying to get Chimera with that taunt, not enough for the kill. Dark Chimera stays alive. Dark Mock helping with the clear, that full metal heating him up. June going to be the one to channel this tribute in as the first tribute of the game goes over to Sidestep Kings. Really making use of these Vikings, really getting some good value there. Solid performance so far by Sidestep Kings. Rain is up in top lane right now, making the most of some extra wave clear. Soaking their way up. Cattle. Smacking through the towers, taunt onto Tyrael. Bergolt dropped a little low, stays alive. We see the Singularity Spike engage coming in for Gia. Going completely different to every other Zero tool we have seen in CCL so far. Instead of going for Wormhole, going for that Seeker in the Dark. Seeker in the Dark is a bit more aggressive, but it means you can engage and disengage a little bit quicker. It's a little bit harder to land, of course. That Jill... Ooh, good kill, Gia. Grabs the first Viking of the game. Of course, that delay on Wormhole. 1.25 seconds of delay after you blink can really punish Zeratul when against someone like a Varian. So in this case, going for that Seeker in the dark gives him a much quicker escape. Allows him to jump in, cleave, and then immediately use blink to escape. And this is a much better harass talent to try and avoid and not give Varian enough time to keep him locked down. It's a reactionary pick because of the enemy draft. We'll see if it works out. It's been to win for Vikings. Cattle channels in. Burgholz tries to interrupt. So does Gia. Both of them too late. Shady Mountain begin to back away. Good grenade. Gia slowed. Going to get a speed boost out with Swift Retribution. Standard talents from pretty much everyone else here. The Vikings are running down Marker. He will back away and sustain though. Lucio going with a little bit of extra stain uh, with the extra self shielding on level 7. Not going to go with anything like Reverse Amp or Boombox. Instead, the good vibrations. That 35-point shield for 7 seconds. Tripled when hitting a hero. Of course, bringing it up to 105. Good dodge. So the boss will be taken. Mirrored on the other side by Chili Mountain. Both teams getting themselves some solid value onto the map. Oh, for a slight miss micro there. We're going to blame you, Ping. As they will take care of that boss in the top lane. Level 10 hit. Four sidestep kings over a full level quicker than Chili Mountain as they begin to push in. We see Varian going with that extra charge with the Warbringer. Maybe you're going to move into Juggernaut later on. If not, it's a good disengage. And of course, he wants those. E he wants that extra stack of parry, allowing him to avoid damage from Rainer and Zeratul. And of course, Diva. Massive shove, cursed bullet, play again for the Vikings. Doesn't matter how many times they buff boat, people still ain't gonna pick boat until they make it tanky. They move in. Gia, wrapping round behind. Sanctification, void prison. Gia, looking for the angle for the VP. Micro missiles, cattle. Harass again. Chimera is interrupted by Olaf. Burns a lot of health, but of course it's Olaf. He is very tanky. All the Vikings are being brought up here for the fight. Jude from behind interrupts one. Balog has been brought up to mid. Currently double soaking. Self-destruct being used. The Vikings have been burned off the point. Bot boss is being cleared up by the fort, but it's going to take out the fort. In the meantime, top boss has made it all the way to the keep and is doing a lot of damage to the front wall. Down there, marker killed off by Ultrisk on the back line. There's a sanctification. Vikings played again into the fight. They dive in. Ultrisk dropping low. Massive shove buys them a lot of time, but we're still going to see Ultrisk taken out. Dartmok loses the mech. Kyosha from the side. They zone out. The grenade onto Dartmok is big. He gets the speed boost from Tyrael. June's channel is interrupted. Eric is able to outrun Gia here. June is microing like a god right now. There's the taunt onto Zeratul with the quick kill on the grenade. There's the curse coming in for Sidestep Kings. Boss took out the keep in top lane. Sidestep Kings snowballing their potential here as they move to pick up a siege camp and begin pushing mid. Vikings pushing mid. Olaf has moved all the way back down to bot to begin grabbing the experience down there. Sidestep Kings extend their lead here. The surprise Vikings pick. Really turning it on the turning this game on its head. Chili Mountain unable to gain momentum yet. Cattle tanking through best they can. 
Missiles coming in. Cattle tanks. They back up. Taunt. Good focus onto Marker. The damage is good. Marker's going to be taken out. You see the mid wave going to get cleaned up. Self destruct going to be dropped. Lots of damage. Eric Baylock kind of ignores it. Takes a lot of damage. Going to use jump to escape. And mid keep will fall. Despite the curse expiring, Odin and the Grey Main damage alone are enough to finish the job. We see the Mortal Strikes coming in for Varian and healing prevent that sustain. Not going with the Shattering Throw to try and burst through Lucio's sustain. Instead, just trying to prevent people healing up. It's going to be especially good on heroes like Rainer. This is the main target here. Rainer's their main range damage dealer. You lock him down, he dies. That is the plan coming in from Cattle here. Cattle playing this very, very well. Drew continues to soak. Eric's currently soaking in top lane. Olaf is in bot lane, but not yet soaking. Has backed up due to the appearance of Zeratul and is playing safe. Sidestep Kings begin working on their mercenaries with Stukov clearing out the bot lane. Three man clearing the bruiser for mid. Eric backed away after the rotation up top by Chili Mountain. Eric's still in range to soak the minions. That does have Eric the Swift. Really hard to pin down. Gets consistent healing as long as he keeps moving and is very, very fast. Looks like a big rotation from Sidestep Kings down to bot lane. They're hunting Zeratuls. He's mounted. He's invisible. Can they reveal him? Invisible one, two, three. They got him. They got the reveal. There's the slow from the level six, from the level 13. Weighted past your virulent reaction. But is it enough? Building reaction expires. G hit grenade and melting point gets the kill. That was a long chase, but they finally got Zeratul. Sidestep Kings keep their momentum going. Five kills to one, two keeps down at the 10 minute mark. Sidestep Kings in full control. Tight grenade for extra immediate burst coming for Tigers. He doesn't want to take long period fights. And we have that banner of Dalaran. So much extra burst damage coming in with Tigers. That is the main target for this. Makes a lot of sense. They're going to position up at their boss. They're winning so hard that they literally have to wait for it to respawn. So instead, while they're waiting, they set a trap. See if they can catch anyone out of position. They rotate up. They find Beagot. They've got speed boosts out. Good knockback from Marco with the penetrating round. There's the holy ground. They said to try to turn on to Beagot to take him out. They burst all the way through the sound barrier. Olaf's on the back line as well. Bergot's only one to fall. Good damage onto Cattle, but they're all able to tank through. No Tyrael available. Chimera's trying to trap someone, trying to let his team set up and let Gia do the rest, but they cannot do so. Main tank taken out. I'm going to see the rotation from Sidestep Kings. Ready to start the opponent's boss. Why not? No Tyrael, no Holy Ground. They they, they have the Grey Mains. So they can clear this easily before Tyrael makes it back. June. June. No. He ran into the core. Down goes Baylog. Killed off by Zeratul. June. He's running out of places to run. But he can st he's, he's sniping fountains. What a jerk. Boss was taken by Sidestep Kings. June is literally sniping the fountain of Chili Mountain right now. Gia grabs the fountain before it dies. We're finally going to see Bergholtz come to stop this, but that fountain ain't looking too hot with a boss coming in. Bergholtz able to get Bergholtz returns to help with the team. They still have Sank up. They still have VP yet to be used this game. Odin going to be dropped. They clear out mid lane, trying to remove catapults. Eric continues to push top. More catapult pressure. Last keep of the game is about to fall. The boss will be likely to be too low health to end the game unless they can pick up some kills here. But there is going to be a boss in top lane that will allow them to set up. He did VP on top of the tribute. Gotcha. My bad. We see Dartmok. Virulent reaction was attempted. Does land onto Dartmok, but not enough to set up the kill here. Paradocry forging up the frequency coming in for Lucio. Hide. Little bit out of position here. They're not able to land the Holy Ground, though. So as such, Hyde able to back away with the team. 
We see Catalyst taking position. Gonna die fast, take out Burgold. They want to remove Sack from play, but the VP is too slow. Not enough to save the day. Good explosion, though, from Burgold. Gets a lot of damage onto the members of Chili Mountain. Hyde is literally running it down at Chili Mountain right now. Main tank Hyde, let's go, as they try to turn the fight onto the kills from Ultra. It's grabbing two, grabbing one. Gia just surviving thanks to the sound barrier. Dark Chimera in full retreat right now. Chimera is low. Gia is low. The grenade isn't hit, but there is the big, there is the large and in charge from Olaf. Chimera is able to survive, but it's just Chimera, Darkwalk, and Bergot as the core is going to be focused. Can they do anything with this? 20 seconds until Raider. As the core begins to go down, they don't have any catapults to reinforce them here. They're just trying to race down with their damage taunt onto Diva Mech. Emergency shielding stays alive. Play again. Puts all the Vikings into the core, and that's going to be enough. GG. Game number one goes over to Sidestep Kings. Sidestep Kings get game number one here. Very convincing game number one. They really are scaling up. That Lucio came out of nowhere. No one was ready to deal with that. And as such, Sidestep Kings, they are able to take an early lead in this series. As you can see here, at the end of the game, nine kills to two. In general, mix it! Thank you very much for the sub. More months, more fun, 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 And we have our half year of fun. Thank you very much, Mixin. Alrighty, so let's have a look at the actual kill count here. One was on Ultralist, the one snipe that they were actually able to get, and the others were just the accumulated Viking kills on June by Gia here. Very convincing game from the side of Sidestep Kings. The two keeps by 10 minutes. The momentum was very, very solid from Sidestep Kings and Jelly Mountain with the new and with the new Swede, more Swedish roster. They're still finding themselves 0-1 down in what is a relatively convincing fashion. Sidestep Kings. They might even be looking to hide stuff as playoffs are coming up, but they do need the points. They do need wins. If they could get some wins on the board, then they're in with a chance for the players because right now. As you do know, Sidestep Kings are quite low on the board. They're currently in position seven. They have quite a long way to go to bring themselves back into contestion and make their way up the board. Let's actually have a look. Remember, there's two weeks of play left after this. So the maximum score Sidestep Kings can get would be four and three in terms of series. Definitely doable. And that does in theory mean they could catch up to Oxygen Esports and Wild Hard Esports if they lost all their next games. But that would mean that Sidestep Kings have to beat Chili Mountains today from that first game, not the two out of their own possibility. They're to beat 30k next week, and then Wild Hearts in week number seven. Gonna be a tough round. Gonna be a very tough fight here. It is doable, though. It is very doable. We'll have to see if they can do it. It's gonna be a tough, lo a long, tough road. But they're still looking to try and take it. Sidestep Kings to make it through. And of course, to not be the first team to lose a map to Chili Mountain. Chili Mountain, their next week opponents, Granite Gaming, who are on fire right now, and Crowd Control. Not easy opponents. They don't have any easy opponents left at all. Sidestep Kings looking to try and get rid of some playoff games. Chili Mountain just looking for honor at this point. We'll see if they're able to do it. Still quite a ways to fight. So that was game number one. The first Vikings being shown by Sidestep Kings. Very sneaky now that they know that it's on the board. But it was June that played it. And that does affect the drafting style of Sidestep Kings. It is very interesting. I still wish there was a system where you could draft first and then select your players. I think that would be really interesting in Heroes. But unfortunately, we don't have that kind of system yet. But in this case... We're going to be seeing that Vikings on the board, showing that they are just as deadly, bringing in June onto the onto play, those Vikings. I'm curious to see how they run with the rest of the draft. Curse Tolo was very a very good map for that. Of course, there aren't as many uh, Viking-style maps that could be utilized here. If we do look at Sidestep Kings, though, one of their other highest win rate maps is Towers of Doom, a 100% win rate on that over four games. A great map. They were planning to bring out the Vikings a second time, but of course... Cloud, uh, of course, Chili Mountain should be prepared to bring out bands against maps like that to try and avoid exactly that issue. So, so we have our next map, and it is a map that could absolutely be a Vikings map as we are heading in to Sky Temple, everybody. 
in game number two. Let's see how we start. First pick going over to Chili Mountain. And yeah, you kind of have to ban Vikings here. They ban Abatha first. Very sensible here. We see the Medivh banned out by Sidestep King. Still sensible. We do know Chili Mountain runs it. They've yet to win, but it's still a sensible ban. There goes the Vikings, meaning Chromie, Junkrat. All these heroes still up. There goes Cassia. What do I see first pick? I would guess Chromie. They first pick Diva. Oh, snap. So now Sidestep Kings, what do they prioritize? They're still running June and Hyde together. Where does the priority go? They first pick Uther, double support perhaps? As Hyde picks that up, there's the Sylvanas for Ultralisk as well. No Chromies for either team yet. Where does the priority go now? I would say Chromio Junkrat on the board, but no. They bring out the Brightwing and Tychus, stealing some of them away from Sidestep Kings. The Tychus last game was very scary. <coughs> there goes the Diablo ban. Sidestep Kings, they do like their Brightwing. But so do Chili Mountain. Four games. Tied their most played hero today. Right now, Brightwing just took the lead for their most played hero. Over Diva. With five games played. Chili Mountain now. Silver Uther on the board. What are you scared of? To ban Johanna, perhaps. To ban the Zul. Kyocha is, of course, in this game. Kyocha's Zul is very scary. The double soak potential that he offers is very hard to deal with. Sidestep Kings now. Are they running a double support style? With a new meta, since Medallion has gone, double support is going to creep up a little bit more. And they are. The Stukov comes in again. Kyocha and Cattle still to go here. They still need their off laner. There's going to be Cattle on the Varian once again. And Kyocha can now just play whatever he wants in the four-man. In the, sorry, in the off lane. He's just going to be soaking as we do see the incredibly hard lockdown of Sidestep Kings with the hyper carry Sylvanas. Very tough to deal with. Chili Mountain, how do you solve this? How do you deal with that much crowd control? Perhaps, perhaps a second support of their own. Some with heavy disengage. They go Falstad. Very smart. I like that a lot. That gives them global potential times two, times three if they go for stage dive. That gives them a lot of extra soak. I'm going to be seeing the Sonya to finish up here for Sidestep Kings. So now they have peeling potential. Brightwing if she goes Emerald Wind, but not, necess and not a necessity. ETC with Face Melt, going to be great for soaking. Falstad for Gia with the mass with the Mighty Gust. Going to really give them a lot more freedom on the map. They're going to be able to avoid a lot of those engages by disengaging early. But they have to make sure they're on point because Falstad, as most people know, is made of paper. So you've got to play safe with that Falstad and make sure that you are not picked off. Because you will be dropped very quickly. So... We'll see who is pit, who is able to emerge victorious. Will the double, potentially triple global of the side of Chili Mountain be able to take the lead on this very large map? Or will the double support kill potential of Sidestep Kings be enough to burn through? It's still a double assassin composition with Tychus and Falstad on the side of Chili Mountain. Will they have enough damage to burst through that double support? The Uther really seeming to work quite well with the Stukov here. They're working very, very well together. They have great lockdown, great sustain, especially with the reactor ballista paws from the Stukov. They can make lots of plays. So, we're making our way in. On the left, Chili Mountain. Still looking for their first win of the season. Let's see what they can do. Bring out the Falstad and Brightwing together. Potentially stage dive ETC. Plenty of options. On the right, Sidestep Kings. They're running the double support composition. Uther and Stukov. With June on Uther, Hyde on Stukov. We know Hyde Stukov is absolutely monstrous. It is incredibly hard to deal with. He has got so many last second flailing swipes in the past on the American server that we know that this is not going to be a problem. Let's get this going. So 
so far. Slow start. It is going to be a reactor ballista pause from Hyde. Doom playing a little bit further forward. Going with the CC. Hammer of the Lightbringer. Really looking to follow up on engages and continue to keep members of the team out of locks down to allow Sylv to do her work. Going for Might of the Banshee Queen on that Sylvanas. Going to go with the maximum damage. Not too worried about percentage here. As you can see, is a slightly lower health tank. Valstead loses half their hit points and is forced to roll away. Healed up quickly by Chimera, though. The passive healing is good. Season Marksman for Marker. Looking to rotate between the lanes, but Sidestep Kings are really trying to interrupt this and prevent that double stacking from going on. The old Chris style. So, Mercenaries already being started by Sidestep Kings. Trying to gain an advantage there. Varian soaking, top lane, soaking mid lane. No one soaking bot lane yet, but with the three-man clear. They know they'll be able to rotate in. Bruiser already started. Sonya doing that. Dartmok on the other side with Gia. They grab theirs a bit first, but it will be mirrored again by Sidestep Kings. Gaining their own value onto the board here. No talents really out of the ordinary here. We're seeing Sonya going with what is the go-to Sonya build these days with a full slam build. See if they continue down that path. Charge coming in. S Sonya with the spin. Lots of value being gained. Bajak armor. No surprise there. In the rhythm. Coming in for Tychus. Wants to try and just keep that percentage damage up. Burn through the healing that way. Gia taking a lot of damage though. Kyocha relentless in the rhythm stacks. Just gained though very heavily. Kyocha. Taking quite a bit of damage. Pursuit of Justice for June. Speed boost. Keeping himself at mobile and keeping himself as an effective tank to get onto that backline. They stun out Darkbok. Remove the mech face belt from Bergolt with loudspeakers. Zones everyone else away. Brightwing taking a very sensible adjustment on level 4. Almost always we see the unstable anomaly. But in this case, Magic Spit. Good power side from Bergolt. Magic Spit increases Brightwing's auto attack range by 1. But more importantly, each auto reduces the cooldown of Soothing Mist. Her cleanse, or her pseudo cleanse, by 6 seconds. It's a huge cooldown reduction that will massively help deal with the amount of damage people are taking. Soothing, uh, Soothing Mist, of course, has a 100 second cooldown. So having that six second cooldown reduction on each auto attack is going to do a fantastic job. Really gives them a lot of freedom. Just need to auto 16, well, 17 technically times to get that cooldown up. That's taking away from the actual cooldown reduction. It's the cooldown itself. There go. Three bad power slide, but Jude still pushing forward, being relentless. The healing output right now from Sides to Kings, a little bit too much for Chili Mountain to deal with. Falstad continuing to just stack up Season Marksman, though. Already up to 10. There's the dive from Bergold. Maka makes it into the fight. Taunt onto Bergold through the lurking arm. He's still able to get away. Phase shift. From Chimera keeps Bergot alive. They reclaim control. Top 100% control by Sonya, though. No reaction with the final shots. Top Fort will be taken out. Re engage from Sidestep Kings. Taunt in the lurking arm, but Bergot is taken out. Here comes the self destruct hide. It's just run all the way through into Marker. He turns around and just gives him a slap. June comes in. They heal each other up. Heal has got to stick together, yo. Side variation on the build from Sonya as well. Wants to be able to keep doing those mercenaries. So instead of going for the Poison Spear, it's instead going for that Battle Rage. Healing a percentage of Sonya's health and get, making her do more damage to mercenaries. To be precise, 10% max health and 25% more damage to mercenaries. This will allow Sonya to solo the Bruiser Camp and do a very solid amount of damage to the boss when those fights come around. Lost Souls for Ultralisk Kier, giving him a massive damage output on a very short cooldown. Great for long period fights. Victory Rush, no surprise there for Varian. Cattle, this seems to be the go-to talent these days for all Varians. That little bit of burst healing, always welcome. Boomerang, not too surprising for the Falstad. Needs to get that wave clear, get that soak up. They clear out the siege. So 
by Steph Kings. Waiting for an opportunity. In the meantime, Kyocha going to get ganked. Three men up in top lane. Falstad and Chimera making their way up to try and join in. But Hyde, with a fast rotation, gets the quick heal. So instead, turn around gank. They try and look for Bear Gulch. Not enough, though. Kyocha will back away. Attempted a taunt to Bear Gulch, But he's able to power side through Cattle and avoid that taunt. Looking at the positioning right now. Mercenary is being taken once again. Lane's pushed up in top lane, which is why we did see Sonya rotating down. She wanted to wait for the lane to push up so that she could begin grabbing that XP again and still look for the gank and avoid the gank onto her. Right now, Diva lane was pushed up. She knows the burst potential of Sidestep Kings, so Darmok took the very safe rotation of starting the Bruiser camp instead of continuing to try and get some fort value up in top lane because that would be risky and potentially death. Almost a half a level lead. In fact, over a half a level lead for Size Step Kings right now is with their level 10. They are on the board. Wailing Arrow. We see the bat we see the Wrath of the Berserker. Warbringer once again. Neither or oh, neither support has picked their heroics yet. Blink heal, no disengaging emerald wind here. Micro missiles. We see the Commandeer Odin, Moshpit, and Mighty Gust. No surprises there. So, what are we going to see from Sidestep King supports? Hide massive shove or the uh, ma massive shove or the flailing swipe. It's going to be the massive shove. And June picked earlier. He went for the divine shield. Very defensive talents coming in here from Sidestep Kings. They try to turn onto Bear Gulch. The massive shove interrupted. Sorry, the lucky up interrupted there by the great mighty Gus. There's the mosh pit. Divine Shield, though. Shuts it down. June will be the first to fall, though, in this fight. Tries to keep Cattle sustained up. There's the Warbringer to get Cattle closer to his gate. He will back away. June's body expires. Hyde begins to heal everyone up. Kyocha. Yet to rotate down. Seeing the numbers advantage is instead going to push in. There's a Bruiser Camp pushing up top lane. Still getting some good value up there. He begins to push in mid lane. Cattle gets the mini stun from Darkbok. The parry sustains well. They push Maka into tower range. But instead they're able to get the turn and pick off the barrier. But there's the counter kill. Ultra is able to turn that round and pick off Maka as well. Here comes Kyosha for the turnaround. It's still a numbers advantage fight in favor of Chili Mountain. Good dodge by Ultra. Preventing himself from also being caught in Bear Gold. Stun there as Hyde backs away. Darmok popped out the mech. Bear got taken out. The damage output is relentless from Ultralisk. And they can keep going forward. Black Arrow getting burned. They get Brightwing looking to make this the five-man team wipe. They chase forward for Gia. Kyocha cannot keep up, though. As Gia is able to escape, they are able to move up. And they will begin starting the boss. Very aggressive play. Very solid push up there capitalizing, running forward, pushing their way through everything. Capitalizing, waiting. They've waited for exactly when June was back to make the engage. Kyotra rotated in, and they took the perfect fight. Able to get Maka right as he was just hanging around a little bit too long. Grenade actually helping uh, Sidestep Kings do this work camp. Turn around, they're just going to try and blow up the Diva as well. There's the Mighty Gust. Mech is popped. So on to Dark Mock. Phase Shift comes in. That is burned. Siege Giant. Temple and Boss all now pushing bot lane. Temple is disabled. The fort is disabled by Sylv. And they're going to keep going. Black Arrows has now expired, though. They still creep forward. Talent advantage in favor of Sidestep Kings here. Looking for their angle or remorselessness coming in for Ultralis. Looking to try and pick people off. Darmok dropping low. You can see that seismic slam is actually dropping Darmok. Kyocha aiming it perfectly through the structures to land it onto Darkbok and get the value there. Black Arrows will be up soon, but that self-destruct will zone away the members of Sidestep Kings and they will let it go. Keep is weakened. They said use Black Arrows on mid-fort and they will take that instead. Mid-fort. Finished off by June, but June is a little bit isolated now. The stun lock. Very good. Preventing June from divine shielding himself. Instead runs up. Going to sustain up Kyocha. Forced to back away. Good escape. Very nicely done. No escape, No escape, by the way, from Sonya, coincidentally. Encore for ETC. Bergolt wants as many mosh pits as possible. He has to be able to react. And keep his team alive. Spell armor for Chimera with the Pixie Dust boost. Giving his team a lot more sustain. Good to go for the Diva. A little bit of a disengage, kind of a have kind of a must-have in this game. 
we see sidestep kings burning their way through the bruiser camp once again clearing that up getting some pressure counter one being grabbed by chili mountain chili mountain over a full level behind but they are not out yet they've got a couple more kills Three kills in this game to six from Sidestep Kings. It's a little bit slower. Unfortunately, they have also yet to take a four. So they've got to pick up some more kills to try and maybe get some comeback XP here. Kyocha is just playing so aggressively. June is there with the Dartmok. He's already lost most of his mech health. Blink Heal comes out from Chimera. There's the cleanse. Dartmok able to escape. Oh, the anti-synergy. There's the turnaround. Looking for Bergolt here. Face Melt will allow them to disengage. But that was a disaster. The communication was not there at all. Let's see that again. In the mean, in the actual game, top lane is being de-pushed here. If you can see this, they look for Kyocha. Trying to set up the kill. Rotation comes in from Sidestep Kings. It's slow. It's steady. They won Dark Mock. But look at Bergolt. He's positioned well. He's grouped up all the enemies. But Marker, the gust, as the mosh pit comes down. The misplay is made. And we see air, no one caught in that mosh pit. Devastating play there. The slight miscommunication is all it takes. Chili Mountain now burning two big heroics. Level 16 is available for Sidestep Kings who begin to push in the middle lane. They have that banner of Dalaran. They have that Titan kill up for the Sonya here. Want to be able to smash their way through the giant slammer. Benediction for Uther. They dive in. Gust, very low cooldown. That does actually prevent the Wailing Arrow, but a damage output is still way too much. There's the massive shove. Hyde accidentally pushes it nearly into Kyocha, but instead the chase is on. They try to turn it around. Hyde is literally running down Tychus right now to try and finish him off solo as Dartmok will be popped. Marka is going to be able to fly away. Chimera can then teleport out if the cooldown is ready. Down goes Darkbok, taken out. Hyde won the 1v1 versus Tychus, but Tychus was able to back away and survive. Looks for it. Oh, the attempt at the virulent reaction there. Cattle still dives forward. Can't land the taunt, though. The cleanse from Marka is it from Chimera is amazing. Cattle went very deep for that, but that was a great save from Chimera. They're going to back away. Second keep of the game is acquired. Boss will be spawning soon. Sonya already positioning for that. Kyocha is ready. 20 seconds until that is available. So they're going to grab the siege camp on the right. And we're going to see Sidestep Kings continue to just gain the momentum. Kyocha really making the most of that level for that level 7 battle rage there. Smashing their way through. Gaining the value. Boss up in 5 seconds. They instead look to just kill Bergolt. Can't interrupt the boss if you're dead. Gust is good, though. Moshpit is back up. That is Gust burned, meaning the boss is now going to be easier to get. But it's 5v5. We might see Sidestep Kings not choose to do boss because of the risks involved going in for the 5v5. Gust is back up at 45 seconds. Fell said using that speed boost from level 16 to escape here. There's the taunt, Wailing Arrow, and Bergolt is taken out again. They're trying to move forward onto Dark Chimera or Gia. In the meantime, Hyde and Kyocha burn through Dark Mok. Mark is doing every bit of damage that he can, but it's not enough to even finish off Hyde here, who looks to try and set it up. Down goes Dark Mok. It's just Maka and Chimera left as they make their way into the core. Zoned away by the Tornado. Massive shove does not land, but they're just going to try and race it down with the actual core damage and just insane single target damage that Kyosha offer, the Kyosha offers. They are going to be able to race through that so easily. Game number two goes over to Sidestep Kings. Absolutely nothing that we can see Chili Mountain doing here. They do have Gust. Doesn't even land it. And that's going to be game number two for Sidestep Kings. One game away from the full sweep. Sidestep Kings coming in, swinging, saying new players, doesn't matter. Same old Chili Mountain trying to make a convincing play and achieve their 3-0 as well. We'll see how they can keep doing. See if they can close that out. We will have to see. Three kills to 12 by the end of that game. Healing output was won by Stukov, unsurprisingly, but you can see that Uther did a fantastic job just smashing through people. Only really person to die outside of one death on cattle. And of course, if anyone's going to die, it might as well be Uther if you don't have a Lee Yorick, because Uther is able to sustain through and get a little bit of extra healing on the way out. And that's exactly what they did every time they got caught out. They just healed up using Uther and then retreated back 
to avoid any danger. Nice to see. So, game number two goes in favor of Sidestep Kings, meaning the mainstream will be going on a break. That feels bad. That's a, that's a break after just under an hour. Feels rough. But we can talk about some of the players here on these teams while we wait for the, t the mainstream to come back up. Right now, as a reminder, though, before we do, let's talk about exactly what this win will do for Sidestep Kings. As right now, they are on path to win the series. If they win, they will move up to two and three, bringing them in line with Granite Gaming and 30k. But Sidestep Kings will have a slightly worse map score than 30k and a slightly better map score than Granite Gaming, which will move Sidestep, Sidestep Kings up to sixth place. Moving Granite Gaming, despite their great win yesterday, down to seventh place. That is what they will get if they can win at the 3 0. They will be 9 and 10, just behind 30k, who, of course, play, played yesterday and had a very good series. We could also see them maybe being joined by Simplicity. See if they'd be able to see if Simplicity will join them there if they lose to Crowd Control later today. If that was a 3 0, that would be 7 and 11. Any, the highest possible score it could be would be 9 and 11. And of course, if they were to win in the Simplicity, the highest score they could get would be 10 and 8 in a 3 2, which would put them still below crowd control even if they were able to win and if they were to uh, the lowest score they could get while winning would be a 10 and 10 which would of course still put them behind crowd control so simplicity they cannot climb here all they can really do is avoid falling further down if they are to lose the, if they lose this series in a 3-0 if they lose to crowd control 3-0 then simplicity will move from fourth place all the way down to set to seventh i can talk today seventh i can never say that one correctly that would be a huge drop in terms of score and that would of course this is of course if this is a 3-0 and if sidestep kings win today's game it would move sidestep kings up to fifth granite gaming up that would keep them in sixth. 30k would take fourth which would be a huge jump up for all of those teams currently in 5th to 7th position. Simplicity, they're going to be looking to avoid that. The way they avoid that, score at least two wins. If they score at least two wins, they will remain ahead of Granite Game. They will remain in line with Granite Gaming, and they can maybe avoid that 7th seventh, that seventh position. The best way they avoid it, though, is to not lose. That is how we do see them do it. So, let's see how we go as we're going to be preparing for match number 3 very shortly, or game number 3, sorry. Let's talk about one of the players let's talk about Hyde now Hyde is of course an absolute legend Hyde is a ridiculously strong player who has been playing from way back in 2016 in fact 2015 he was playing on certain teams playing on MVP black of course with, with the Heroes Team League, Heroes of the Storm Team League, that was a thing back in the day, eventually losing to No Limit, a very familiar team, people might recognize TNL. There was a couple of Korean tournaments back in the day as well, where they lost to E-Star, who were playing from China. E-Star was really, really strong back then, and really were until they left. And, of course, we then had an Inven Cup, where they lost to MVP... Uh, they, were, they had MVP Sky, which is what he was on, and they lost to MVP Black. And then they also lost in the Super League. First season of the Super League in 2015 as MVP Sky to Rave Hots. But 2016 started to gain a bit of momentum, winning kind of everything. Where Hyde stopped playing with MVP Sky and moved on to Tempest. Where they performed some insane cleanups. Winning the Super League 2016 qualifier. Making their way into Super League where they finished first in Season 2. Beating MVP Black in a 4-0. One of the most brutal defeats an MVP Black roster ever, ever lost. They then beat them again at the DreamHack All-Stars Summer 2016 beating them in a 3-2. They didn't have, and then eventually that composition was picked up by Tempo Storm for a very short-lived season where they were able to beat out L5, scoring yet another third place in the Gigabyte Heroes Power League. And then they did only finish fourth in the Super League, losing to, guess who? MVP Miracle! Surprise! I tricked you. And then they went into the Gold Club World Series, uh, the Gold Club Wildcard, where they did all right. They did, went into Group S, weren't able to finish too well there. 
HGC comes round. Hyde. His performance continues to be incredible. Continues to put on some great scores. Playing with the newly re revamped Team Tempest after Tempo Storm dropped the team. They came first in the qualifier for HGC. The first season of HGC in 2017. Doing a great job there. Performed very well in the season. Catching third in the Eastern Clash. Losing to Team L5. Who of course went on to great, great things. They finished fifth in the Pro League in season in phase one, though, so didn't do too well there, losing to MVP Miracle. They then lost again to MVP Black further down the side in the Eastern Clash number two, finishing third place. And third place is kind of a theme for this Tempest roster going quite a long way forward, eventually going to BlizzCon and losing to Roll20 in the Grand Finals, finishing ninth to 12th, a big upset for a Korean team, one of the lowest positions they'd ever finished at an international tournament. 2018, pretty much seconds and thirds across the board, across Eastern Clashes, mid-season brawls, losing to Dictatus, losing to Ballistics three times that year, Eastern Clash 2, Pro League, and Eastern Clash 1, and then eventually losing to Miracle in the, at BlizzCon again, so going 5th to 8th there, Tempest always seeming to disappoint at BlizzCon, really having a rough time, and 2019, final year of HG, uh, post year of HGC, so not able to perform as well as people would expect. Uh, obviously a completely different roster here. They did perform pretty well. Second places, third places again across the board in 2019 with Chal Eng. Uh, we saw Hyde move over to them where they lost to the one in the gold series. In the Revival League, big shout out to G Clef, by the way, for setting that up and giving us some great Korean heroes of the storm throughout the years. Doing it with some playing with some great teams, second and third places across the board with Team Tsunami. They again lost to the one, and 2020 is where we see them start to rise up again with the refresh. 2020, he played with Team AF, which was able to emerge victorious in Gold Series. Second places across the board in his team. He played this time not playing with. Uh, Hots was the name of the team. <laughs> it was a very strange name. Losing to Tsunami. And then in Storm Division, finishing in third place from NGS, where they finished very, uh, finishing in third place there, and in third place in the Harvest Tournament from Chili Mountain. So we have our lobby up, as you can hear. The draft has started. Hyde, a legendary player, performing well, never really finding that true World Championship success. Let's see if they can do it. Cassia, going to be coming in here. Rainers, we see Chromies, the Medivhs banned across the board. Vikings and Abatha can be played on this map, not banned out by Chilling Mountain this time. Would uh, would Sisyph Kings be brave enough to play it? We can see that Got Filth has come in here, and that might be why. Hyde has gone. Got Filth has been traded in, so June will be making his way back onto the main support role. Changing players mid-series. Mid Sidestep Kings. Adjusting their playstyle, getting that second assassin. Much better for the immortal race on this map. Very, very smart. All right, all right. So, Jenny Mountain, they start off with Garrosh and Lee Ming here. Give us some extra race. June is able to get his bright wing. Let, uh, we don't get to let June play Arna style here. The bright wing instead going to be a little bit of extra long-term sustain. And Cattle is going to get that Diablo. Diablo is actually countered pretty hard by Garrosh. It's a risky pickup here. We'll see how well he's able to do. He's going to be looking for Lee Ming. So of course, a great Diablo map, though. Picking people very, very often, causing lots of chaos. Hanzo will be removed. There's that Ana ban. They don't want to deal with the Ana Lee Ming. Very sensible. Yes, anyone can change their roster during matches. They have, every team has six players, and they can swap out any of them at any point. Chili Mountain now. I really like this. It's a smart pick here. Bringing Gottfeld for the second ranged assassin, because it's a better ranged assassin map. Really smart. With double support, you lose a lot of race. We see Greymane. Going to be picked up. That's a lot of race for Chili Mountain. Very race focused. Whereas right now, Sidestep Kings have a little bit of a team fight focused draft. But double resets now available for Chili Mountain with a lot of burst. Brightwing may struggle with that. How do Sidestep Kings deal with this? They get Sylv. 
Again, not as good on the race, but great for just team fights in general, and they go for Blaze. Very sensible here. If you're in a situation where your opponent's team has double resets, you make sure that you have a big enough front line that they won't die and get resets to allow that back line to get picked off, and it's a lot of protection for that back line as well. Gives them a great CC train, which is going to allow them to try and invade and take the fight, which is what they're going to be wanting to do, because again, they will lose the Immortal race basically every single time. Jenny Mountain, they finish off now with their off lane for Dark Mock, and they go with Thrall. Oh, I think that is an interesting choice. It will work into Blaze. It'll get a lot of percentage damage there if that's the plan they choose to go with the Rolling Thunder. They could also go with the Crash Lightning in theory, but I'm concerned about the tankiness of Thrall to set up against all that crowd control. I think Thrall's just going to get kind of CC trained. I don't know if Thrall's going to be tanky enough to buy those reset heroes some time to get enough damage out to really do the resets. I am concerned about this draft. The Thrall is good. It's going to have to be played really, really well by Dark Mock to avoid getting locked down and picked off. But if he can do that, it's a lot of extra damage that they can utilize to lower that he the health of the enemy. And of course, if they can get Size Up Kings low enough, then Greymane and Lee Ming will get resets and they'll be able to capitalize and set up for a solid victory. Some of those resets will be removed, of course. Greymane will not likely be going for Go for the Throat here. We'll be going with Cursed Bullet because there's some beefy boys in that front line. And picking them off will help Lee Ming a load. So, we're getting ready for game number three, ladies and gentlemen. Let us head in. Who will emerge victorious? Will it be this team on the left winning their first map of the season? Will it be Chili Mountain? On their side, they're running with the double rip, with the double burst, can't believe Ming, and Greymane with that Thrall in the off lane. Dartbok, one of the best Thralls of all time. Fight me. Let's see if he's still got it. On the on the right hand side, sidestep kings. Sylvanas, Cassia, two of the most picked and most utilized uh, damage dealers in CCL right now. Both of them performing really well. Sylvanas with a win rate of 46%, but a prior a popularity rate a game and games played of 39 games played this season. Cassia, we've already mentioned, 59% win rate. Played 44 games this season. Showing up in 76% of the games. Sylvanas in 51. Two of the top assassins in this division. Sapphire on the board. We have Groundbreaker. No surprising there. Warbringer. Warbreaker for Garrosh. See how much they're able to do. They do land the route onto Cattle. Not enough to capitalize yet. Stomp is good. Nothing to capitalize on yet. Already four stacks coming in for Gottfeld, who is running that Lightning Fury build. Already getting the stacks, and there's going to be a lot of pressure. It is a Rolling Thunder build for Thrall. No surprise there. As the, sh as the Shadow Charge from Cattle prevents Bear Gott from getting a swap onto Gottfeld or Ultrisk. Ultra Smite to the Banshee Queen. And Auto Attack Stuns coming in for Cattle. Bring it out that Feast on Fear. Dark Mock just playing safe. He knows he can heal up with his trait relatively easily. So he doesn't need to worry too much about defending the minions before they reach the towers. He has to sacrifice a little bit of his own health. Camp is acquired by Sidestep Kings. You can see Blaze was on the way down there to maybe interrupt if we did see it. Chilling Mountain try to invade. Kilcher made his way down but was not required. June healing up Got Filth here. We see Sylve making her way up to top. Kyocha in position. Just clearing the waves. Ultra Risk moved out of vision. Chili Mountain don't know he's here yet. But not seeing them in bot lane may give it away. We may see Dark Mock begin to move in, but right now they are alone. Instead, we see the four-man push in bot lane. Capitalizing on the fact Sylve isn't there. Oh, Marco oversteps there. Takes a couple shots from the fort. Not enough for a kill yet. Dude, in fact, eats an arcane orb on the way out. Tower goes down. Throw attempt. Lands onto Gottfeld, who turns around, drops the three-man blind, and is easily able to micro away. Good dodge. Possession for Sylvanas. Go to talent these days when it comes to Battlefield of Eternity. Very cool to see. Ultralisk back in a way haunting wave over the wall. Marker in position, but he didn't expect the Brightwing. Brightwing did not show up. Very nicely done. Have a look at this again. Have a look at this again. 
have a look at this again and keep an eye on the vision. How much was shown in this fight? Once we jump up to the top lane as Bruiser Camps are being taken in the main game. Have a look at how much was shown here. So Ultralisk takes a lot of damage. Because Marker does come in over the wall and then Brightwig starts to phase shift. They had no idea Brightwig was here. Perfectly timed by June and Ultralisk to avoid giving away anything to Chili Mountain to execute a perfect counter engage. Beautifully done. So we make our way in. The Immortals have spawned. Bruiser Camp being cleared out in the top lane by Greymane. Turn around as Cattle tries to get onto Bergold. Good damage being done by Gottfeld here. Yosha tries to set up onto Chimera, so we'll eat quite a few tower shots, get rooted, and it's actually going to get absolutely bodied. June comes in to save the day with that phase shift. No level 7 peekaboo yet, but we'll survive. Cattle hovering around. Halftime show achieved by Sidestep Kings. Let's see what we do with this triumvate for Li Ming. Extra sustain with the Frost Wolf Resilience for Dark Mock Heroes. They do try to make their way in. Try to keep Cattle in the Immortal Route. Unable to do so. Brightwing will arrive in time for the save. You can see Cattle positions himself in between Bergolt and June, but it's not enough. June still caught out and picked off. But Ultrisk over the side looks for Gia, but he can't find the angle. Got filth moving in. Bergolt nowhere near his team for the tankiness. Darbot goes down. Big stun from Kyocha. Cattle avoids the route of Deckard as Maka dropping very low. Finds the gap in the Immortal, but Ultrisk easily able to dive forward and pick off both the kills. Gia. They're going to try and get one reset, try to capitalize on that. We'll continue to race. Cattle takes one shot, but he cannot tank that forever. The Immortal will still be won by Sidestep Kings, but a little bit of that shield will be taken off by Shelly Mountain. Giving themselves a little bit of extra sustain. Blaze, by the way, Oil Dispersal coming in at level 4. Extra oil radius. This may be comboed later on with the nano machine coating. To try and deal with that great main and thrall. That wouldn't surprise me to see. Of course, getting that extra rate, extra 20% area on the uh, on the oil spill. And the cooldown reduction of oil spill. It would be a great combo if that's the way they choose to go. They make their way forward. Festering wounds, by the way, for Ultras, but for a little bit of extra burst here. There is a very heavy burst board you can do by diving in with Festering Wounds and getting the reset Windrunner. Making the most of it for Might of the Banshee Queen for a massive burst setup with percentage that with the increased spell power. Fort taken out. Immortal down to half health. Marco will be able to make quick work of that before anything else is capitalized on. There's a throw onto Cattle. Peekaboo onto June, who finds himself alone again. Quick rotation from Kyosha to set that up, though. Able to save June. June turns around, helps out the rest of the team, and Bergot will be taken out. Cattle tried to dive onto, onto Dartmog, but was unable to get the throw. And as such, this is going to be the death of Chimera, likely as well. Good body block, and Chimera will be taken out. June does eat an orb. Not enough to actually do anything and get any kills. Level 10 is acquired by Sidestep Kings. Putting on quite the show here. Wailing Arrow. Ball Lightning. The Bunker, of course. And Apocalypse for that Diablo. Lots of extra value to be gained. Marker tried to get some counter push. Did get a little of the fort down. Now in full retreat, the oil comes out. Extra radius actually keeping Marker slowed enough that Kyocha can land the stun. Virgo comes in, and that will be enough to get Marker out of danger. Groundbreaker finishes the quest. Blink heal, and June is gone. We'll get caught by the root. Not enough to do anything and finish any kills. Still a full level for Chili Mountain to get level 10. Quite a ways to go. Making their way into the bot lane. Possession. Grabs all three ranged minions. They've got a camp so they can take a few shots here. They're about to have a bruiser camp stolen away. That's going to be pushing into the bot lane. Causing a lot of chaos. Chili Mountain though. Again, they do have Grey Mane. They can clear this very, very quickly. And right now, Chili Mountain, they're just trying to soak their way towards level 10. But let us be sidestep kids. We'll get a very easy halftime show. 
able to easily blast through that, not needing to worry about race at all. They just kill everyone, and then no one's there to race them. They start on their bruiser camp over the wall. There's the dive. Got Phil. He's in the fence. Charge in. Very cool to see. Level 10 finally available for Chili Mountain. Stay wild and listen. Warlords challenge Earthquake. Cursed bullets. Which is used to try and take out Blaze, who turns it round. Quick start onto Bear Gods, who's trying to tank through. Forced to back away, though. They still engage onto him. Everyone else abandoned Bear Gods, and he is taken out. The full retreat, trying to reset on their own Immortal, but that left Bear Gods alone here on that garage. As we see Sidestep Kings making their way in, they will seize control. Chili Mountain, best opportunity now. Snipe Gottfeld, because he is a little bit lower. The Emerald was used, but Gottfeld repositions himself literally behind everyone. Avoid the damage and the step up attempted there by the by Dark Mox to try and set up to try and get themselves onto that Ultralisk. Onto Gottfilth was not enough. Great zoning, fantastic play, great counter by Sidestep Kings. Dark Mox was really fishing there. It was a risky attempt, one they kind of had to make at this stage. Nowhere near enough to achieve a victory. They make their way forward. Possession. Cleans out some of the minions. Sidestep Kings make their way forward. Looking strong. The Immortal. 100% shielded. They're going to take down this keep easily. Black arrows being used. Best bet right now. Stay well and listen into a full man taunt from Garrosh. Best chance they have. There's Darkbot caught off the side again. Stay well. Does keep Darkbot alive though. He's getting body blocked by his team. But into the fray. Keeps him out. There's the Apocalypse. Catches only Garrosh. But they're able to kill off Blaze. First kill. Second kill of the game going over. They're going to try and get Diablo 2. Castle drop low. They snipe him with the Groundbreaker. Bergot has no health left. But Maka is popping off right now. Trying to find these kills. Chimera is in the back line. They're able to get the stun. There's the kill. The Immortal begins to burn down the core. But the shield is... Is God and Chili Mountain grab themselves three kills and are able to keep themselves in this game. Rotation down to the bot lane. Full size Deb Kings can try to keep some momentum going, keep the pressure on. They've grabbed the first keep of the game. They have level 13. Windrunner, of course, for Sylvanas going for that burst star build. Surge of Light and now going for that War Traveler for the, for the Cassia, keeping her fast, keeping her mobile. Making it harder for her to be picked off. Blaze. Oil leak. So it's just extra slows and extra damage in the team fights there. The fuel leak. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. See the step forward. Bergolt. Getting a great pickup onto the Solus Castle there. That was huge. Stay a while. Actually grabs a good set onto Godfilm. Chili Mountain. Wailing Arrow does come out, but they grab another double kill here. Chili Mountain gets some momentum onto the board. In the meantime, Brightwing is backdooring. We do see Marker Port back to go deal with that. Ultralist clearing out the minions. Sidestep Kings being a little cocky here. They can't afford to get kit picked off like that again. Diablo still on zero souls. He didn't even get a single soul from the last time he died. Not needed though because we're still early game enough that it did not matter. We're going to see Marker clear up the siege the uh, siege camp in the base. That will give them a little bit more time. And they will start on their Bruiser camp. The next objective spawns in 13 seconds. Everyone from Sidestep Kings is back. But the kill count. Most even it has been in any of these games. Great setup right now for the side of size for Chili Mountain. Putting themselves back in this game here. The sidestep Kings, they still hold momentum. Still no souls for Cattle, though. Feels bad. And he's gone for charge build with le charge build at level 4, meaning he can't get them off autos. It's actually charge people to gain stacks. Not ideal for a Diablo who is currently soulless, getting sieged down. They're getting a lot of race done, though. Getting a big head start. You can see Chili Mountain. They're trying to force the fight. There's the attempt onto Cattle. Trying to finish him off. Percentage damage from Dark Mock. Here's a great teleport from June. Keeps them alive. Bergolt is the one who takes the most damage. The phase shift with level 1 and 7. Keeping Cattle alive. Going to fountain up. Make their way forward. Halftime show. Still achieved by Sidestep Kings. Chili Mountain. 
might still be in a position to take a defense to take a fight defense positions but there's level 16 for sidestep kings that makes it very hard for chili man to do anything about this we do see the verbal protection here for blaze so he's just adding extra damage onto this fight they creep forward there's the charge marker Backs away. Lots of percentage damage being done to Kyosha. Dropping him low in the fight. There's the charge, though. Apocalypse. Boom. Catches no one. It's an affray from Bergon. Saves Marker. Chimera back it up. Drops low. Cattle finds the opportunity. But Chimera stays alive. Ancient Blessings trying to keep him going. But Godfield onto the backline to put a turnaround. Chimera still alive. Finally killed off as Brightwing teleports into the backline to support Godfield. They find Bergon. And that is a massacre in favor of Sidestep Kings. They did lose Diablo. Still no souls available. Available. Marker's taken out by Ultralisk, and that leaves Darkbok and Gia. Gia's escape is being cut off. He's trying to hide, trying to escape. Darkbok is already dead. Gia going to try and go for the escape, but this is going to be the five-man team wipe as Chili Mountain lose everyone. However, Sidestep Kings, they don't have enough mana to try and end the game. They're going to bring the Immortal here. They don't have enough mana and health. It would take too long with only six seconds left for Garrosh. They learned their lesson last time. They play safe this time and go for the Immortal. Much safer strat. Well executed. They will play around. They have a Bruiser available. They choose not to grab it. Oh my god, they actually leashed it. Cattle, make it. He made it. They actually leashed the cab. Wow. Alrighty, they're going to start work on that. Chili Mountain will all be respawned here. This will now be a camp and the Immortal pushing in. They're actually going to give up on the camp. They don't finish it in time. They need to make sure that they're here actually with the Immortal. Level 16 now on the line for Chili Mountain. And this may be their last chance to defend. Throw onto Cattle, Torn and blow up. The blow up of this composition is so hard to deal with. They have to keep playing around it, but the ball lightning is too good. Chimera will survive. Bergolt is bodied by the Immortal. That's the double kill. Lee Ming taken out, as is Bergolt on that garage. Darkbox trying to deal with Got Filth Marker, baiting them in. Stay a while. Everyone is already woken up. The charges from Kyosha not able to land. Here comes a big dive from the Lee, from the Sylvanas Ultras. Has he gone too deep? No, he's able to escape. Turns to try, tries to turn onto Chimera, and with Windrunner, is able to pick up that kill. Kill. They turn on to Darkbox, the Immortals untouched, and that is GG. We will see Sidestep Kings take the 3-0 in this best of five series. Very well done. Ultralisk with zero mana decides to just go all the int. There is no out, only degrees of in. And with that, Sidestep Kings take the 3-0, and they are not the first team to drop a map to Chili Mountain. Sidestep Kings take the series. Very convincing. Very strong performance by Sidestep Kings. Looking good. As you can see at the end here. Eight kills to 17. Best kills we saw from Chili Mountain yet. Really getting those kills. But not enough to win in the end. They were able to kill Cattle a lot of times. Four deaths on Caterpillar there. But... The reactionary play from Sidestep Kings, the burst damage from Sylvanas and Gottfilth. Everyone, both of them just hyper carrying on their own, with June just going to whichever one needed the most health. They were able to play well. Kyocha more than making up for the lack of Diablo by adding in a lot of extra CC and a lot of slows with that maximum amount of oil. And they were able to capitalize and claim victory. Game number three and the series going over to Sidestep Kings. Very nicely done here. So, we'll be keeping an eye out, waiting for the main stream to start its interview. Then we'll jump over there. Here are the talents, by the way. We did see Mirrorball Thrall, by the way, on level 13. Did go, uh, level 16, sorry. Did go for the Alpha Wolf, trying to get a little bit of extra percentage damage. Trying to help them finish people off. And we did see the Herodric Staff coming in for the... Uh, the Herodric Staff coming in for the Deckard. So... Let's find out what we're watching next. With that first series over, we'll be jumping into Simplicity versus Crowd Control. This will be our next series of the day. Is it even 6 p.m.? That's like in half an hour, right? Did they win so fast that they actually beat the scheduled time? Is that the first time that's happened? Will they push up the map? I, the match? I don't actually know. I think this is the first time this has happened. I don't know what I don't know what the setup here is. I don't know how this works. 
All right, cool. That's new. Well, Chile Mountain can't actually change their roster anymore. They have used all of their roster swaps, as far as I'm aware. I don't think they can actually change their roster anymore. I think they have utilized all of the swaps. They only get a certain amount per season. All right, we have an interview, so I'm going to jump over to the interview so you guys can watch that while I set up for the next game. Like, uh, you or Kyocha, how do three... Like, if you had to summarize it in one to five words, the play style of each of the three regions. Uh, I think the main things I've heard, I don't know, like, 100%, but just that EU is very aggressive and they like just engaging right away. There's just no hesitation, which we kind of saw that last game. They just kind of went in and then it wasn't sure if you'd win or not, but you're fighting at least. And then Korea is a little more macro and the damage players are a lot more aggressive. So like the DPS are just running in constantly trying to trade or get engaged on and then play off that. And then NA, I don't know. NA is kind of wild. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True enough. Bomb it. I just, you know... You, you, you've all grown so much throughout these weeks and it definitely shows. And, and I think your play style, as you were mentioning, is really starting to come as, as a group as well. Moving to the future weeks, um, just I'm out, of, out of curiosity, uh, the scrim and the prep that goes into, you know, let's say weeks six and seven, how much are you scrimming and how much are you prepping, especially with Hogger coming in next week? Um, just kind of depends. I think we've we've started scrimming a little more just by like rotating our roster around. So we'll have like two or three blocks a week with the same five and then just have other variations depending on who has time. So I think we're definitely getting a practice in overall. Cool. I have one right. really quick question for you. I just want to get your I just kind of want to get a temperature reading um, as someone who's a tank player and, and with a lot of knowledge. What is your opinion of Hogger? currently right now as we are getting ready for them to come into ccl do you think they're first pick first ban material or do you just kind of think they're situational i don't <laughs> think first pick first ban i think he's pretty good i think people still have to figure him out but especially i i feel like there might be like small buffs or something coming soon too just because overall hmm. people are really struggling playing him okay but I think he'll be a strong offlaner and maybe okay in the format. I don't think he'll be a All right. Awesome. I think Grubby's been playing uh, more games on Hagen than anybody, so you can just go to him for some uh, some tips and tricks. But real quick before we let you go, any uh, final shout-outs? Uh, shout-outs to Sidestep Kings. Shout-outs to our sponsor, Flash Gaming. And shout-out to my team, and especially Got Filth and Hyde and June, who are just rotating whether they're playing or not. Everyone's super cool with it, so uh, shout out. Cool. All right. Well, Caterpillar, thanks for joining us. Congrats on the win today, and looking forward to seeing your games next week. All righty. So, Cattle feeling pretty good about that. Interesting information on Hogger. I agree that I think he's going to be good in the off lane. I think that's going to be pretty important. I think his reactionary start, I think his play style is going to be very much based around that Hog Wild because it is a unstoppable every 14 seconds. So, I think we'll start seeing him against higher CC comps, but I think if we do see some little buffs. The issue is he's winning a lot in lower level games and losing a lot higher level games. So we might see minute buffs and that might break him in regular play and then we'll see really heavy nerfs. That's my prediction. We'll have to see how that goes. For now though, I'm going to send you guys to the break screen. Coming up next, as a reminder, will be Simplicity versus the powerhouse that is crowd control. Here is the table, just so you guys can see where we are up to. It is now refreshed. So Chili Mountain, 0 and 5, 0 and 15. Feels bad. Feels bad. Sidestep so Kings, they creep up the board and they do overtake Granite Gaming during this. So now it's down to Simplicity. If Simplicity can win a couple games, then they will avoid, if they can win at least two games, they avoid moving down to seventh place. That's all they have to do, win at least two games. If they lose three games, if they win three games, they will obviously stay where they are and maybe catch up to Chili Mount to crack a little bit. They'll stay in fourth place. But if Simplicity lose anything less than 3-2, then they will be in seventh place. Let's see if they can do it. So Simplicity, every map counts here. 
at least two maps, need three. Crowd control, they can be looking for the three zero, because if they take three zero, they will move up to 14 and six, which will actually make them overtake Wildheart Esports. And actually, if they get 14 and six, they will overtake Oxygen. If crowd control win today in a three zero, crowd control take first place. Well, we'll see if they can do it. For now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be heading to a break while we get set up for the next series. Don't go anywhere. If you're enjoying the stream, be sure to drop a subscription, a donation using a donation using bits or the Streamlabs link below. Buy some of my merch. Check out my humble affiliate link to buy yourself some lovely games. There's currently, I believe, a free month of the EA membership thing. We can play like all of their games. It's pretty decent. There's some great stuff going on down there. And if you're watching this VOD on YouTube, then become a member. Hit the join button below the video and check the description for a way to donate and support your caster so I can keep doing this wonderful casting thing. Don't go anywhere, everybody. We'll be right back after this quick break with series number two.